Okay, we're considering procedure planning and the uh, factors and information that contribute to procedure planning as a way to ultimately get to planning session goals and procedures. Um, we have reviewed goal planning at the long-term and short-term level uh, phases, long-term and short-term phases, and we've discussed the creation of a procedural approach. And again, I've highlighted that we are, that it's the procedure, uh, that um, session goals, session goals are acts of learning. And we consider learning and rehabilitation, the acquisition of the long-term and short-term targets. As we think about factors that contribute to the designing of contexts, linguistic and non-linguistic contexts, which will be the procedures, the procedures the tasks, the experiences that the client um, has that um, promote acquisition or rehabilitation of a specific uh, linguistic target. So at, um, at the long-term planning phase, we identify a procedural approach once we set our long-term goals. That is, we ask ourselves, what paradigms of learning or rehabilitation give us per, um, causal explanations for how a particular uh, uh, linguistic target is acquired? And that's going to come, the answer to that information, that question is going to come from uh, our research of the literature in terms of approaches to intervention for a particular problem and will also come from the theoretical um, premises or the paradigms the premises of paradigms that uh, that explain language learning and uh, rehabilitation uh, which really uh, are integrated and underlie the research research being really Part of one of the uh, the uh, endpoints of research or motivations of research is um, is theory building. So theoretic premises have been we identify related to to uh, facilitating the uh, long term target. But we identify these theories and prem related premises at the long-term procedural, uh, at the long-term planning phase in terms of um, once we've identified the long-term goals, we start thinking about procedures. We go to the literature, we think about theory, we identify premises. We also consider maintaining factors, those other behavioral systems that will have to be addressed in our clinical sessions, in our clinical interventions, those factors that could be contributing to the speech language problem, or factors perhaps that are that are functioning well and that might be facilitate by addressing them might facilitate acquisition. So, um, having I done that job at the long term uh, planning phase we really have established a foundation for short-term planning. In particular, we now go to operationalizing that procedural approach. And operationalizing the procedural approach really leads us to ask the quest these, uh, these questions or uh, consider these issues. One, what kinds of non-linguistic contexts, including activities, should be created in treatment? What kinds of... of uh, activities and also what should be the nature of the linguistic component of the therapeutic context and by that we mean the clinician's communication with the client what should that be that could also include what should the client's communication be related to the target target behaviors So what information guides the, our operationalizing of the procedural approach? By the way, I use the word operationalizing in very similar 
way that it's used in research. Operationalizing variables takes a concept, such as a language or a cognition or something, and then identifies the observable, measurable behaviors that stand for that stand for that construct. Well, that's exactly what we're doing here. We're identifying premises, causal premises, theoretically based premises about acquisition, and we're now uh, or rehabilitation. And now we're going to say, well, based on those premises, what specific observable um, contexts? are we going to create? So we operationalize these premises. So let's think, uh, let's remind ourselves with, let's think about this with reference to LC. Let's follow that, that LC child a little further. So remember our short-term goals. So one of the, one of the sources of uh, information for operationalizing the, operationalizing the procedural approach is to consider the short-term goals that have been established subsequent to the long-term goals. That's source one. So let's, let's think about this in context of LC. Remember, his short-term goals were to produce temporal chain nar explanatory narratives containing conjunctions before, after, and until to direct the clinician in context of problem-solving tasks. We also... Um, I came up with the idea that L the short-term goal, LC will produce conditional causal content form interactions using appropriate conjunctions, if then, unless otherwise, while engaged in problem-solving tasks. So he'll explain things to people using a narrative. He, he will produce, if then, conditional causal content, content form interactions, unless otherwise structures. And he will manipulate similes to uh, describe the attributes of objects manipulated within problem-solving tasks. Well, already we have a direction here that we're going as we move towards our session goals. We're moving closer to our session, the sessions that we're going to be planning. So with reference to these short-term goals and the long-term goal that generated them previously, we ask ourselves, I think I went the wrong way here. Did I go backwards here? Yeah, I went backwards, see? Having trouble going forward. We go back, remember, clinical research was guiding us as well. You know, meta-analyses, experimental research, descriptive research, or clinical practice. And based on the research and related, um, related, uh, theoretical premises, that's what we ask, what are implications of premises for designing procedures? And those premises could come from constructivist theory, pragmatic, um, relationship-based pragmatic theory, social cognitive theory, operant theory, or motor theory. That is, Piagetian type constructivist interventions, Greenspan type, floor time type, um, relationship-based pragmatic experiences, social cognitive Vygotskyan type scaffolding, scaffolding experiences, Skinnerian Lovas type operant interventions, and uh, motor um, interventions. We also consider maintaining factors identified in the procedural approach. What are implications for designing procedures with reference to whatever maintaining factors apply to the client? Again, we identified that those at the, the uh, within the procedural approach at the long-term planning phase. They could come from cognition, sensory motor, psychosocial, or medical areas. This is not on a uh, play posit uh, format where um, what I say is followed by a, a test question, but these are the, the uh, they're, they're not really test questions. They're meant to promote reflection on what uh, I say in these lectures. So you can consider this or jump back to this and, and ask yourself this, where I'm just doing a direct 
lecture. And now part two, operationalizing the procedural approach for LC. We reviewed the short-term goals. And these are the premises we came up with at the long-term planning phase. Uh, we said that relational knowledge re relevant to story grammar, event relations, is acquired as individuals attempt to achieve goals they set for themselves and create relationships, create strategies to overcome problems, and reflect on relations created and the consequences of their attempts, that is, their feedback, on feedback. So we're going to be taught, again, for the long-term and short-term uh, goals, again, remember we target relational, relational constructs always, generative relational constructs. And uh, constructivist interventions target relational knowledge re relevant to story grammar, which involves story grammar, which itself is relational, and event relations. Keeping that in mind, what are the what are the implications? What are the implications of these premises? Think about it. What are the implications for actual and actual therapy situation? Well, it means that we would think about engaging the client in a problem-solving activity with concrete objects because of the importance of feedback, and we would encourage the clients to communicate about their intent objects being manipulated, problem-solving procedures, and causal explanations for outcome, because that encourages reflection, not to mention language performance that we're targeting. Now, social cognitive premises, we, we are also a consider um, targeting with reference to uh, LC, I I employing, I said targeting, but I'm going to say employing these premises. We're going to use them to think about um, the actual situations we're going to create. We're going to create situations, contexts, as session goals and procedures relate that will come right out of these premises based on the implications. These, these premises have implications for session uh, design. So social cognitive premises, language emerges from scaffolding, which is caregiver expert drawing attention to objects and relationships and modeling language and problem solving procedures. Scaffolding is most effective within the individual zone of proximal development that is appropriate for the client's stage of development and within familiar routines appropriate but a little beyond where the individual is already, right? Because we're trying to move that client along. And what we're really trying to do in scaffolding is it leads to internalized verbal directives and procedures used to talk oneself through problem solving. That is, it's very connected to executive functions. At least it's one of the functions of scaffolding. It leads to in, in, taking in explanations, uh, identification of objects, actions, attributes, etc., modeled by others. Retaining that somehow internally, we usually think in terms of a memory store of one sort or another, for future retrieval in a problem-solving situation, regulated by language. The Piagetian intervention, the Piagetian constructivist principles are about solving problems with reference to sensory motor or physical procedures and talking about what you're doing, but not necessarily directing yourself linguistically. Social cognitive premises lead to the in internalization of linguistic informa uh, language structures, which are then used to regulate oneself and the environment in problem-solving context, language-directed behavior, Piaget action-directed performance, and reflection on the action, which leads to, the, to conversations about it. So for procedure planning, this does suggest the implications here 
are that we should model linguistic forms, rules, and scripts for the client to represent and apply to familiar and novel situations. We should model. And uh, that's about what we came up with, I guess, from the social cognitive principles, model verbal or text-based linguistic forms, vocabulary, sentences, rules, and scripts for the client to learn, internalize ultimately and apply to familiar and novel situations. So we'll be doing that during sessions. Both, in, So we'll be creating problem-solving events involving the manipulation of concrete objects, asking the client to reflect on what they're doing and to describe what they're doing or to anticipate and to perhaps to um, um, help the clinician function with the client creating the language. And we will also model for the client as well. Now what I ma maintaining factors, that would be the next question. What maintaining factors will we have to address in our sessions? And they're addressed not as goals, maintaining factors, but as procedures, as ways of creating, as uh, components of the context that we design. We design the context, either the linguistic or the non-linguistic, to address the maintaining factor that needs to be addressed that is contributing to the language problem. So remember with LC, we have a cognitive issue that he tends to manifest pre-operational reasoning, given tasks that involves operational reasoning, particularly those that have spatial components. He has diminished story grammar. He produces descriptive additive chains in context of story creation and story comprehension exercises, especially when he has visual illustrations and, and uh, and the verbal language of the story to attend to both. He has a trouble attending to both the visual illustrations and the verbal language. So he doesn't infer relationships among episodes given a sequence of illustrations. Implications. Implications now of the, his, his performance related to cognition we need to create, the implications are we should be creating tasks for LC that involve operational reasoning and that contain a spatial component and manipulables because um, we want to, first of all, we, we recognize that operational reasoning is a major component of school, um, our subject areas at LC's um, grade level and age level. And operational reasoning translates into causal and um, and uh, translates into causal chain and uh, uh, explanatory narratives related to um, um, that's relevant to um, relevant to uh, 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 schoolwork, essentially, the, the, the curriculum. Then we, the implications are we will manipulate storytelling tasks presented to LC. Per, this is, the, again, implications of cognition as a maintaining factor, our efforts to address cognition and the cognitive characteristics that LC is is manifesting. We will manipulate storytelling contexts by providing or removing visual stimuli because uh, visual stimuli is, are challenging to him. On one hand, it supports storytelling, but on the other hand, he gets bound up in description because he's at the pre-operational stage. He doesn't pull himself back and think of the relationships among these picture sequences. And then we want to model exemplar stories organized according to the story grammar that we're working on, which, will, um, if I remember, which are both goal-based causal chain and uh, explanatory uh, procedural narratives.
Now, here's a challenge for everybody listening to this, and as you, you can always review back and look at the actual slides. But um, you will see that planning and operationalizing the procedural approach for LC so far has not incorporated operant premises, operant theory, uh, that is, or operant techniques. Those are Skinnerian type or Lovas type applied behavior analysis technique. Now, now that's usually applied to more kids with more intense uh, inter uh, developmental disabilities, more severe, but still, I, we, can, we use operant, prem, um, operant uh, premises to, in, 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 in many learning uh, uh, interventions, any, in many interventions, both language interventions and school-based interventions across the lifespan. So we're, I'm asking you, here's a challenge. Identify at least one learning premise from operant theory that could be used to guide procedure planning for LC. And uh, what is the premise? And what are the implications for procedures based on the premise? The premise is going to be a causal statement about what leads to learning. What then would be the implication, or rehabilitation, in this case learning, acquisition then what are the implications for actually creating session procedures? That's what, and that's what we call operationalizing the procedural approach, identifying these learning premises based on uh, the research and clinical research or clinically relevant research. And then and these premises explain that the acquisition of X, Y, or Z is explained by or influenced by certain processes and interactions. Then we say, well, those implications would be then we will create a context that addresses these premises. If you're following me, we just did that with LC. I've just gone through that with you. So um, this is again the MK slip uh, uh, format that serves, is intended to serve as a guide for you as you operationalize procedural approaches for your clients. In which, and again, in this format, we, we, we in the little blue arrows, um, give you the decisions that you have to make at that particular, at any particular planning phase. In this case, the task of operationalizing the procedural approach at the short-term planning phase and then the sources of information that you should consider in, uh, in arriving at a, a decision. In this case, a decision about how you're going to be operationalizing the procedural approach at the session level. This is leading us again to session planning, which is really what we want to do. Plan, write goals. Um, and the procedures, which will be incorporated actually in the goal statement, you'll see, as the context for the behavioral target. Well, this is going to be guided by our procedure planning, as well, of course, as our goal planning. But remember again, session goals, which we will address in class beginning uh, this coming Thursday, session goals are acts of learning. So we are just considering in procedure planning what kinds of learning or rehabilitation need to take place for the client to acquire the long and short term targets. We'll continue with this, consider, um, this line of thinking when we meet on Thursday.